Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, let's take a look at part two of our look at motion effects. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can create some very cool variable speed motion effects right from within your Media Composer and Symphony timeline. And believe it or not, it's actually hidden away. And if you're not really paying attention, you're going to totally miss out on it. And you're going to find yourself going out to third party applications like Adobe's After Effects to create motion effects that you can do right from within your own timeline. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. Now let me show you sort of the way that I would suggest you don't do the technique that I'm going to show you now. What most people like to do, I'm just going to open my sequences bin here, and let's open my basketball footage. And what we want to do is just pick a shot here. I'll just come down here, uh, maybe let's pick a different one here. Sure, that's not even too bad right there. I think what we're going to do is we're going to have the shot go to normal speed till right about there, right till the ball hits the hoop. And then we're going to slow it down. And then we're going to have our basketball player let go and it will go back to real time right about there. So what most people will do in this situation is we're going to hit T on the keyboard. And we sort of talked about this briefly in the last lesson. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. We're going to edit this clip into our timeline, into our sequences bin. And what we're going to do is just find about the point where we want it to go to slow-mo right about there. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an edit. We're going to come down here. And then we're going to add another edit. And we're going to slow down this portion of the shot. Again, we're going to hit F7 on the keyboard, which is my shortcut for match frame. Now, if you don't have match frame mapped to your keyboard, you can actually find it right here under the drop down hamburger. And you can see it right there, match frame. But again, like I said, for me, I actually have it mapped to F7 on my keyboard. And I know that this shot is 1 second and 20 frames long. So I'm going to punch in plus 119 because you always want to go one frame less. So that way when you hit the out point, you'll see that we do have 1 second and 20 frames. Now you'll remember from the previous lesson, I have motion effect mapped right here. I'm just going to click on it. And what people will do is just punch in, yeah, sure, why don't we go, let's go 50% here. And we're going to stick with VTR style because that's the one that I like to use all the time. I'm simply going to say create. We'll just stick it in the sequences bin for now. And then what we're going to do is delete this clip in our timeline by hitting X on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And we're going to edit this new clip in. So what we have kind of is regular speed, slow-mo, and then back up to regular speed again. Now that's okay in this shot. It's not really too noticeable, the fact that we just cut to the slow-mo. But what we want to do is actually slow this down. We want to have it actually start regular speed, ramp down to that 50%, and then ramp back up at the end to go back to real time. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose a different shot that we see more of the people here. I think this might actually work pretty well. Let's just check out what this other shot does here. Nope, no good. This is the shot we're just looking at. Maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll pick this one here. Okay, and what we're going to do is slow it down right about here so we get the cool dunk. Go back to real time right there. Okay, so let's clear the monitor here. I'm just going to delete this motion effect in this sequence. What I'm going to do is come back into my clips bin here. This is the clip we're going to use. And what I'm going to do is hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire clip. I'm going to hit B to edit it into my timeline. I'm going to select sequences. I'm going to say OK. And what I'm going to do now is instead of most people think that I would do a motion effect right here, and I'm not going to do that. Now I could, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac, and you'll see that I'm already down in the Time Warp section, but if you're not down there, simply grab the drag bar, drag all the way down to the bottom to the Time Warp section, and I'm going to take the Time Warp effect. You'll remember I kind of laughed about this in the first part of this tutorial. What I'm going to do is take that, just drag and drop it onto my shot, and you'll see nothing has happened. I can take this shot, play it in real time. Very cool. Now most people say at this point, okay, well, well what do I do? How do I actually get in and adjust this? Well, what's very cool about the motion effects inside a Media Composer and Symphony is they actually kind of have they kind of have a hidden menu and a hidden parameter setup that you're not going to know about if you don't actually get to it. In some cases if you don't read the manual, but in most cases you'll stumble across this accidentally. But how you find it, you know that we go into effects mode with a regular effect by coming up here to effects mode, clicking on the effects mode button at the bottom of the composer window. Obviously, we can find it over here. What I can also do is hit Shift and Y, which is my shortcut. But watch what happens now when I step into effects mode. A new window appears up here, and it's called appropriately enough the motion editor. 
And inside the motion editor, we actually have a few more options that we didn't have before. Now you're going to see the very first thing that I see here right underneath the edit graph speed versus position is the type of motion effect I want to do. Now you'll remember I said that I would always use uh, VTR style, but you're going to see now that doing things this way, I actually have four more options. I have blended interpolated, blended VTR, fluid motion draft, and fluid motion. Now I'm going to get into some of these in a later tutorial, but for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to my favorite uh, motion effect. You know, you remember I said that VTR style was the one that I like to use all the time. Not entirely true because it's actually blended VTR that I like to use all the time. So all I'm going to do is switch over to blended VTR. Now remember, nothing is going to happen because this is still a real-time clip. There we go. So what I want to do is get in and make this variable speed. So how do I do that? Well, that's going to involve me using one of two graphs. I can either use the speed graph or the position graph. Now, for me personally, I like to use the speed graph. I always find it just an easier way to work because we are talking about speed and we're talking about position in our clip in our timeline. And this is a very easy way to figure things out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down and say, you know what, I think right about here, we want to start our ramp down to about 50%. So all I'm going to do is just add a keyframe. This is basically just working with keyframes. What we're going to do is at this point, we're going to have it slowed down to about 50%. So all I'm going to do is take the speed, drag it right down here to 50%, just like such. You'll see now that our guy slows down to make that dunk. He's going to make that dunk at half speed. And I think right about there, I'm going to add another keyframe because we're going to ramp it back up to 100%. But you're going to notice that something has happened. Originally, when I had this clip in my timeline, what I'm going to do is just undo what I just did here. Let's just come back here. Let's just undo what I just did by hitting Control and Z on the keyboard, Command and Z for all my Mac friends out there. You'll see that this shot actually goes all the way to a finish where our basketball player disappears. But if I come in and do what I just did by slowing this shot down, Take a look at what happens now. I'm going to bring that down to 50%. Now our basketball player doesn't leave the frame. Well, I'm going to get to how we're going to adjust that in just a second here. What we're going to do is come down to, I think, about there. I'm going to add a keyframe. And the problem, like I said, is I need more of the shot. Well, you know what? No problem. Because this is a motion effect and I have slowed this down, all I'm going to do is step into trim mode. And we're just going to extend this shot down. Now I'm going to extend it to the point where this backboard stops moving because that's when I know I have all of the shot used. Let's see, right about there. I'm just going to come back a little bit here. There we go. And you'll see now that our basketball player, if I play this, will slow down right about there. Very cool. The only problem is that he stays slow all the way to the end. Not what I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step back into the motion effects editor. We're just going to come down to about here, I think. And we're just going to add another keyframe, just like such. And what we're going to do is just take that, and we're going to bring it right back up to 100, just like that. And take a look at what we have now. Slows down, does the slam dunk, hops off. Very cool. And what we can also do here, I'm just going to step back in here for a second. I'm just going to grab these two keyframes. I'm going to hold Shift on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select them both. I'm just going to come down to about 33%. Let's just actually undo that because I want to make sure I've got them both here. There we go. Down to roughly about 33%. Even that's close enough. Just give it a little bit more drama here. And what I can also do right from here if I wanted to, remember we talked about that strobe effect that we can add in. That's very cool. You'll see I can come back here. I can actually add that strobe effect right here. What I'll do is just put a strobe effect of, or a strobe value of, I think, about three frames. I think that's working pretty good. And what we're going to do is just come back. Again, I'm going to hit play. Now, you'll see as soon as I added that strobe effect, you'll actually remember from the first lesson, it's going to make that a blue effect, which means that I have to render. But take a look at how quick that HD clip rendered here. I'm just going to hit play now and take a look at this. There's the slowdown. You'll see that with the blended VTR, Take a look at what we actually have. It's actually doing little dissolves in between these frames. Now let's just switch back to VTR style here. You'll see that as soon as I do that, it disappears. So there's really the difference between VTR and blended VTR. Blended VTR is actually putting little dissolves in the frames. You see that's a little bit shuddery. And what I'm going to do is just switch back here to blended VTR. I'm just going to hit Shift and F2 to render the shot again. 
take a look at what we have now. So you'll see a very different effect by simply choosing the different types of blend you or the different type that you want, whether you want a blended VTR or a regular VTR. Now, obviously, completely up to you, completely how you want to do this. For me, I actually kind of like those frames blending into each other. But obviously, like I said, it really depends on what you need and what your client needs. So what I'll do here, maybe we'll just switch it back here to our regular VTR style here. And like I said, getting in and creating these very cool motion effects is very quick and very easy. And it's something that most people think they have to do inside of a compositing application, when in reality you don't. You can do it all right from within the comfort of your media composer or symphony timeline. Now, what I thought we'd do is I said we were only going to do two parts of motion effects, but I think what I want to do is I think I'm going to add a third part in. And what we're going to talk about in part three of our look at motion effects is we're going to talk about how we can actually get in. And this is something that's very cool, and it's something that I use, you know, in corporate videos a lot. It's where, you know, maybe we're talking about a product or even if it's a person, and we need to get in and highlight something that might be wrong with something that's going on in the shot. And I always use variable frame rate motion effects and a very cool trick inside of the marquee title tool to get in and highlight things quickly and easily right from within your media composer or symphony timeline. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.